see, the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family. So aside from her record as a prosecutor, why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? The Trump rally explodes in Atlanta after Kamala Harris gets destroyed. And in this video, we're gonna break it all down. Welcome to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this out to more people just like you and me. Trump held a rally in Atlanta, Georgia in the same arena that Kamala Harris did. The arena was so packed they couldn't even fit everybody in. In fact, the fire marshal had to refuse people from coming in. And of course, President Trump gave him an earful about it. And during the rally, right, there are speakers that come on the stage before Trump arrives. And this amazing woman by the name of Michaela Montgomery, which owns a company called Conserve the Culture, and she's considered to be like a Republican activist in the Atlanta area, she gets on stage and absolutely destroys Kamala Harris. So without further ado, let's play that video. Now, why don't we jump right into it? See, as a young single mother, I can tell y'all that rent is too damn high. I I can tell you that as a young black voter, groceries are too damn high. And as an American citizen, period, seniors like my parents should never have to choose between medicine or food. It should never be the quality of life versus the quantity of life. And I don't want to hear, oh, but we capped the price of insulin and lowered the price of all these medicines. Yeah, but you raised the price of everything else, so it's about time to start telling the truth to Americans and let them know exactly what they're signing up for if they want to vote for Kamala Harris. We need to vote based on facts and not feelings. See, under Harris and Biden, the average Georgia household is losing $1,060 per month, and inflation is at 21.4%. And due to the war on energy, average gas prices have reached record highs for the state. We also did a poll, and 80% of us black Americans are not happy with the current state of the economy, so I'm going to need 80% of y'all to vote accordingly in November. They love me. They love me. They really love me. The left wants you to get in your feelings about things that have been said, but I want you guys to pay attention to what has been done. They don't want to talk policy. They just want to use propaganda to steal your vote. Okay, so really quick, I have three points for you guys. She's just amazing, right? Great personality. I love her energy. What you see is exactly what you get, and that's how I feel about her. So let's go to the, the very first point that she made. People need to vote based on facts, not feelings. Now, here's the bottom line. 2016 to 2020, prices were down. There was, There's no way to dispute that. There's no way to argue that, which is why the media likes to throw it in the trash. And the last four years everything is up. That's a fact. Now, you may feel like you don't like Donald Trump. You may feel that he is a mean person. You may feel that he's going to take away your reproductive rights. But what do the facts say? And that requires a person to just take five minutes out of their life to do a little bit of research. Which brings me to point number two. If people did their research, they would be able to see through the gaslighting from the current administration. Because this brings me to point number three. It's just all in line with the same thing of this election. One side wants you to focus on what the other side has said instead of what they have done. They want you to focus on President Trump's remarks about Kamala Harris's race. Right. They want you to continue to get triggered over that because what they don't want you to do is to look at what they've done at the southern border, what they've done with the billions of dollars they've sent overseas, what they've done to the inner cities by diverting funds and resources to migrants over for the local community. See, they don't want you to look at that. They want you to pay attention to what may trigger you emotionally. Let's continue talk policy. They just want to use propaganda to steal your vote. The left is trying to tout this woman as a savior for the black community, but all she's done is hurt the black community since she came into the game. (laughs) 
See, the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family. So aside from her record as a prosecutor, why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? I wonder if Mrs. Willie Brown, a black woman, is also with her. A few days ago, President Trump said he didn't know Vice President Harris was a black woman. I'm trying to figure out what all the outrage is about because she's only black when it's time to get elected. Did I lie? The same black people who are mad at Trump for being confused about her race, ethnicity, Did I lie? The same black people who are mad at Trump for being confused about her race, ethnicity, nationality, whatever, are seemingly forgetting that while you're touting her as a savior for black people, she identifies as an Asian woman. She chose her side and it wasn't ours. When asked if she would ever do anything specifically for black people, she said no. Whereas Trump gave us the platinum plan, <laughs> which specifically uplifted the black community by increasing capital by almost $500 billion, creating 500,000 new black businesses, and would give black churches the ability to fight for federal resources for their communities. And why are we acting like strong borders aren't a thing literally everywhere else in the world? Since when has being patriotic been a crime? See, a few weeks ago at the debate, Trump mentioned black jobs. And a lot of people got in an uproar as if they didn't know what he meant. Well, we go to the polls and cast our black vote. We go to the stores and spend our black dollar. We live in our black community, but for whatever reason, we draw the line at a black job. Okay, so you guys seen that. Uh, two points for you guys. Number one, the whole black jobs conversation, right? I, I love this because it just shows you people's ignorance at the end of the day. Okay. Everybody knows what he meant when he said black jobs. Okay. Black people who usually get particular jobs are no longer to get those jobs because they're going to immigrants. People listen to me very clearly. I live in California. I have a home improvement company. This is exactly what's happened over the last 20 years. The more people across the border. Okay. The more legal immigrants are being used to do the jobs that people really don't want to do. No one wants to go out to the farm and pick oranges and pecans and apples and strawberries not everyday americans they don't want to do that let's just call it what it is we, we live in a very convenient world today which has made americans very lazy okay but this is what's what well, this is what's taking place okay that that's like the first level of it the second level of it is construction majority of the trade or construction jobs are now migrants doing those jobs now not every single construction worker you see is an illegal immigrant, by the way. A lot of these people are citizens of this country, and I'm happy for them, and I'm grateful for them. But do not believe for a second that there's a lot of businesses out there that are using illegal migrants to get work done, because the government has allowed this influx of illegal migrants to come into this country. And then you combine that with how expensive it is to run a business today versus four years ago. What do you think you're going to do, right? You're going to find ways to save money, especially if you're in construction. And thirdly, if an employer knows they can hire an illegal migrant, they can get an incentive for hiring an illegal migrant. They know that the illegal migrant will take whatever they give them. They're more likely to hire that person than a black person or a Hispanic person who is a citizen or a white person or an Indian person. Replace it. The principle is still the same. Okay, so I have one more thing I want to play for you guys. But let's take race out of it. Just as a woman, period. How can you be a champion for women's rights when you're taking away opportunities from biological women and giving them to transgendered ones? because I wasn't done. See, how can you promote equity for women and you're allowing men to play in women's sports? And what kind of feminists would still allow men to enter their sacred spaces, i.e. our bathrooms and school locker rooms? Do I even need to mention the opening ceremony at the Olympics? 
fact that Angela Carini was forced to fight a man and told us that she's never been punched so hard in her life. We cannot allow dangerous liberals who think things like this are okay into the White House, because my daughter will not be fighting a man at her wrestling match. <laughs> and what I think both men and women can agree on is that national security is important. So who would y'all rather see lead us into war if it were so to happen? My silk press sister Kamala or the big dog Donald Trump? Drop the mic, right? Uh, just amazing on, on her behalf. Uh, okay, so this whole uh, men competing in women's sports. I mean, do I really need to get into this? This is common sense, right? This is biology, okay? This is also safety. If we're going to give rights to trans people and let them compete in a woman's sport, we're taking the rights away from women. They have the right to be safe. They have a right to a fair competition, those two things go out the window when you're allowing a man to compete in a woman's sport. I mean, just talking about this is stupid because it's common sense in my opinion, right? And we have the whole Olympics thing, which I did a video on, okay? We have the Riley Gaines, who was a swimmer who lost to a man. I mean, and that was in the Olympics as well. It's, it's getting embarrassing at this point. And I don't think it's fair to any side. Even the trans people, if you if you were born a man and now you want to be a woman and you want to compete in a woman's sport, it's not fair to you to face so much backlash because that's what you decided to do. Why not just go make a trans sports league? I mean, there's a woman's league. Why not make a trans league? I, I still don't understand why they haven't done that yet. I, I really find it funny. And with the amount of money and rhetoric that the left is pushing for these woke ideas... Why not just pressure them to create leagues for them? Create a section of the Olympics that's for trans people. At least you're respecting the rights of women at that point. Okay, so before I wrap up this video, I have to make this point about war. Technically, you could argue that we already are in two wars because we're funding them. We're funding Israel and we're funding Ukraine. And we're not talking about millions of dollars. We're talking about billions of dollars and we're talking about weapons and we're talking about ammunition and we're talking about humanitarian services so we're doing everything except sending soldiers over there <laughs> i mean so so technically we are in two wars because we're we're financing them and so if it did get to a level where we did have to send our own sons and daughters overseas which person do you want let's say i i ride with these lefties and say you know what Trump is a monster. He is the next thing to Hitler. Absolutely. Do you want him going against Putin or do you want Kamala Harris going against Putin? Let's use some common sense, can we? So as I wrap up this video, I want to say this to you guys. So if we take the facts and we look at the results we truly want to get, then it makes sense why we should be voting for one side versus the other. And again, it's not me to convince you or tell you what to do. I'm just presenting the facts as I see them and giving you my perception on it because that's my mindset. So what is yours? What do you think about her speech at the Trump rally and the points that she brought up about Kamala Harris? Um, and what do you think about some of the points that I made? I want to hear what you guys have to say and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace. Peace.